Welcome, 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 everyone. I am your host, Lex Black. You're tuning into my show, Midnight Arcade. This is episode 46. Forgive me, I have been neck deep in work writing my third book, Neon District Influx, third book in the sci fi cyberpunk fantasy trilogy. I've been working on a new series called Odyssey, which is a totally different kind of like manga graphic novel esque type of series so i've been extraordinarily busy on top of being a one-man band and being a father so you know how it is but we back in this and we are gonna check out borto chapter 11 tubu vortex chapter 11 and the title here is true power if i didn't say it before make sure you like comment subscribe hit the bell icon to be notified for whenever i drop that new heat you heard yes sir all right let's get into it now so you're leaving off where Himawari broke out of the wood release jutsu Inogen is still impaled to shit holy hell all right she steps down <clears throat> Jura says I'm sure this can be attributed to the nine tails chakra but what is this Shikadai says Himawari Himawari looks over steps her leg is fixed and then Shikadai says I thought that leg was broken it's healed that's that th those are the perks of having the nine tails in you okay she walks over to Inogen touches the base of the tree something happens happens oh her hair collects him from the tree or the the pike and everybody is kind of shocked looking on and uh then shikadai says hey be careful and then he kind of uh what did i say last episode guys she's going to use her nine tails chakra to heal inogen right there's no way that they would just let him die in front of her right now too early so he's healed after being brutally impaled shikadai is completely shocked saying his wound is closed himawari says i'm not sure if it's fixed properly get him to the hospital quickly chocho was like what the hell and shikadai was like hey what the heck is this power you've got himawari says i'm not sure either but it must be what he's interested in and i'm going to confirm it now chocho goes confirm him what what are you planning and Himawari says, I'm going to take him down. Otherwise, it's the end for, for all of us. Jura looks on like, hmm, cute. <laughs> Himawari says, you guys get away now. Considering that he's only after me, you should be safe as long as you don't try to interfere. Now hurry. Chocho says, but. And Shikadai says, Chocho. She looks over and Shikadai says, let's go. We're just in the way, especially in, with Inogen in tow. Chocho says, Shikadai. And Shikadai says, calm down and think about it. This is a battle we have little chance of winning, so we got to minimize our losses. That's what Himawari is saying. Jura says, a wise decision. Nara Shikadai. I shall remember your name. Let's meet again someday. And Chocho says, no way. Chocho says, I cannot accept you fighting him alone. Himawari says, I'm not comfortable with it either but if i have this power i want to carry out the responsibility that comes with it <laughs> sounding like her pop chocho looks on and himawari says because i feel that's what dad and big bro would do too what did i just say a second ago mind you guys like i always say no pretext i've avoided spoilers like the plague i don't know what's happening in this episode just using my knowledge of the lore and some common sense right so Again, I wonder what big bro she's referring to. Is she referring to Kawaki or is she referring to her actual biological big bro in Boruto? Probably Kawaki because of the Shinjutsu, but you know, a dreamer can dream, right? Chocho closes her eyes in frustration and resignation. And then she says, well, you promised we'd go together to that new pancake house when it opens. Muari says, I haven't forgotten. I love pancakes. <laughs> That's cute. Shikadai says, Chocho, come on. Himawari is looking pretty fierce. She steps forward and Jura says, I know that you're not complete idiots, which is why it's incomprehensible. What is it that drastically lowers your judgment ability again and again? She keeps walking towards him. And then he says, Yam Yamanaka Inogen essentially brought about his own destruction by foolishly not heeding my repeated warnings and engaging in an exceedingly reckless behavior that clearly lacked rationality. Now he's, you know, preaching to her, lecturing her. She walks closer to him, looks up to him, and then he says, but while I do not understand it, it seems that something has caught a fire in you. Is it just coincidence or is there some correlation? She says, shut up. Ooh, gut punch. But I don't see any expression on Jura's face. Looks like he tanked that. Everything else around them exploded went into complete destruction he's still watching her with his dangerous renegon eyes she cocks back for another punch hits him with a powerful handmaker i'm sure he's okay right but damn the destruction it causes 
Ooh, man, landscape altering. She looks on, Jura pops up, flies right back towards her full speed. She preps for another attack and she prepares a tailed beast bomb. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And he prepares his own using his Renegon and they shoot each of their own blast towards each other. And we will see what happens. I'm sure it's going to be just cataclysmic. cataclysmic. <laughs> and <laughs> lo and behold, it is. And they cancel each other out. They look back and they go, Himawari. Shikadai looks back and says, Himawari, or he thinks it. She's still holding her own. Jura's looking on. Jura says, nah, this is a surprise. He lands. And then he says, not only do you have the power, but you can also control a Biju bomb. Given, even given Nine Tails power as a prerequisite, I'm extremely curious about how you managed to undergo such rapid advancement. But even more so, let me stop before he goes on. I'm going to tell you how, Jura. And, uh, viewers it's something called plot armor <laughs> that's how she managed to do it right to push the narrative along anyway she looks on jura says oh he charges her with a headbutt that's some naruto style shit she recovers he's immediately behind her again he hits her with the tomahawk kick bashes her into the ground damn damn face first and then he says, this is a first. I've decided to release just, <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit, guys. You've made me want to test my true power. Himwari is huffing and puffing. She is hurting after that kick. That shit was brutal. Now we're on uh, another scene with Hidari and Sarada and Sumire and Konohamaru. Let's see what happens here. So remember, last episode, last issue, Sarada hit him with a beautiful counter using her Sharingan, avoiding the surprise Chidori from Hidari and countering with her own, getting him right in the gut. Um, and he felt that shot that she hit him with. So let's see what happens here. She says, that's a fatal wound. You must be in pain. If you answer truthfully, I'll ease your suffering. Who are you? Why can you use the Chidori? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I love Sarada talking spicy. And you know what? This is true to her character because from the beginning of Two Blue Vortex, she has been talking super spicy. And now we're seeing that she's backing it up with skill and ability and confidence to boot. I love it. I love it. He looks on and like a sucker, he goes into one of his claw marks to disappear and maybe reappear somewhere else. Yep. So he used the claw marks to heal the fatal wound, right? And then one of the Konoha Shinobi says, hey, his wound is healed. Samiri looks on, Sarada looks on, and then Hidari says, you, those eyes of yours, Jura told me about them. They're Sharingan, aren't they? He, uh, Sarada says, Jura, and then Hidari continues, Chidori, is that what the attack I used is called? I wonder why it was so hard to control, but it seems that eyes like yours are needed to master it. Sarada says, what is up with this guy? Konohamaru said, he never answered your question. Who are you? Or rather, what is your connection to Uchiha Sasuke? Fair enough. Get right to the point. Thank you for us readers, Konohamaru. Sarada is shocked by the question and then Hidari goes, who? I don't know who that is. Keep throwing ridiculous questions at me. Who am I? Who am I? I'm trying to figure that out. That's why I came to Konoha. So Mary is All right, can we talk about this? Right, I've been very high on praise for the writers of Two Blue Vortex because over all them fools have not missed they're 10 for 10 with these chapters all right but i gotta say it's starting to get really fucking annoying seeing sumire just as a side prop what is she there for you know what i'm saying what is she actually there she's just standing there looking on and spectating the whole time why is she so important guys fill me in on something that i'm not sure if, if there's something that i don't know that you know please fill me in on the comments and maybe there's some sort of plot wrinkle for her down the line in the future for this franchise, for this, uh, for Two Blue Vortex, but I don't see it right. She's just fucking there and it's pissing me off. Sorry, mini tirade. Anyway, she looks on and she's, whoa, she's surprised, right? And then she heals Master Konohamaru, protect Sarada. Konohamaru says, what? And then she deduces that Hidari's target is Sarada. I think, no, I know it. And <laughs> lo and behold, he uses the claw mark to use his hand to grab her and hits her with a Chidori using the claw. That's some genius shit right there. Holy shit. Now, is that a Chidori Senmon or uh, not, not Senmon, Chidori Kern. Sorry. That is a clever ass way to use the Jutsu. Wow. She gets shocked to shit. Everybody yells Sarada. One of the Shinobi says Earth style. And before you know it, he gets torched, cooked 
like kebab on the barbecue. My lord, vicious. He is burnt to shit. Sumeria so catches Sarada as she falls to her knees. Konohamu says, damn it. He goes and tries to hit him with a Rasengan. I'm sure, yep, he is fixing to get curb stomped because he's fodder as well. Hidari pops up behind him. Konohamaru is like, oh shit, Hidari is gonna hit him with a Chidori. Konohamaru looks back and says, wind style, Rasen Barricade. Interesting, okay. And doesn't seem to, okay. So I see what happens here in this panel. The, the wind jutsu was able to cancel out enough of the power of the Chidori from his from Hidari to take off the sting, enough of the sting from the impact so that it didn't like penetrate him, pause, so that it didn't penetrate his defenses or, you know, really do some fatal damage. And at most he got blown away with uh, somewhat of a cancellation of the Jutsu with the Rasen Barricade, which is pretty cool. I wanna know more about Rasen Barricade. For any of you guys who know about it, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you think about it. I'm always for a discussion if you didn't know. Okay, he gets slammed it to the wall. The other shinobi is like, oh shit. Samira says, Sarada, hang in there. Hidari gives her no chance. Pops up behind her, hits her with the Chidori. She's shocked to shit and she's out. Thank God, get her the fuck out of here. And Sarada says, can't move my body. Hidari stands over her. And we're back to Jura and Himawari. He backfists the shit out of her. She sort of tanks it. He preps another Renegon style Biju bomb. She, what did he do? Oh, he must have used some sort of like cellular style jutsu with his Renegon. That's fucking diabolical. Holy shit. Okay. She falls down. She's in pain. She's hurting. And then he says, hmm, what astounding healing power far beyond human or Jinchuriki level. Something almost like what we Biju possess. You're getting quite weak. It's natural. No matter how much you heal your injuries, you can't escape the corresponding chakra expenditure. True. He really is testing his power. And he probably hasn't even shown a fifth of it. These guys are beasts. Chibi Kurama says, God, he's a bigger monster than I expected. Definitely not someone you can do something about solely with high potential. I hate to say it, but we're totally outmatched. All right, Kawaki and Delta are flying somewhere. And then Delta says, hey, could you listen without getting mad? This guy just beat the crap out of you. So what's the point of going there? Kawaki says, because I can't not go. I'll do whatever I can. Delta says, that's my point. What can you do? <laughs> can we stop for a second? Okay. <laughs> because all throughout Two Blue Vortex, Kawaki's been getting curb stomped. And Boruto made it very clear. And uh, just got an idea. I feel like Boruto is going to recover enough of himself of control from Momoshiki to make a nice hero's entrance to save his sister. I think that's what's gonna happen because Kawaki's gonna arrive on scene. He's gonna try and do something. And with his skills and his abilities with the Daikoku Ten and you know his Ishiki 2.0 skills, he'll be able to throw draw off for like a split second or so, but then he's gonna get punched out of the scene somehow, some way, and then Boruto's gonna come in. I think that's what's gonna happen. Let's see though. Ha! <laughs> okay, prematurely, but I was right. Guys, I promise you I didn't read this issue. So they sense somebody coming and Boruto's flying towards them. And he's flying directly to, yes, what did I? I'm nice at this. I am nice at this. I am nice at this. He swoops in and saves his baby sister, catching Jura off guard. Hidari says, I have no idea who I am, but somehow the one thing I did know from the get-go is you, Uchiha Sarada. So I ask you, who are you? What will I gain if I devour you? Sarada says, huh? She sees a toad. <laughs> Sharp eyes there, kiddo. The toad is looking on. And then he says, in position, Uchiha Sarada's location is confirmed. The symbol is square. Looks like he's by, yep, he's using flying Raijin. He pops out of there, pops back into the scene where Sarada is. He has Himawari in tow. He blitzes Jura, cuts off the uh, wood release jutsu that's about to absorb Sarada. Everybody looks on, including Konohamaru. Boruto lands. He lands like he ain't worried. <laughs> Swag. I love that. Uh, Jura looks on and says, hmm, you crafty thing, Otsutsuki, Boruto. And that is the end of the chapter, friends. That's the end of the chapter. I think that was pretty good. Full of action, full of implication, full of wonder. A couple things happened that I liked. They got to the shits. Himawari was showing some of her ability, but also showing the limitation and the lack of experience of her using her QB chakra and her QB ability to fight these guys. These guys are on a totally different level. And as a continuous supporter of the OGs, I always got to kind of wonder 
What would Naruto do if he were in this situation and he had Kurama with him? Now, I know that, you know, we're, you know, the parameter for power scaling and when he last fought Ishiki, it was a struggle. He had to go in Baryon mode in order to sun dude, and he did that brutally. Um, but because he's had so much experience with Kurama, you know, and if he has a second chance of getting some of his chakra back, I think Naruto would fare well because he's Naruto and he has a lifetime of battle experience. Anyway, Himawari, she's young, she's got potential, but Kurama said, we can't just live off potential. And this is something that we as readers, we all knew this, right? This is pretty obvious. She came up to the limits of her ability. Jura just wanted to test his ability. He's very fascinated by her healing ability. He considers her a biju like them. Interesting. They kind of got Sumiri the fuck out of here. She's just fought her. I don't know why they keep including her in the story. Again, guys, if I'm missing something, please let me know, right? We see Sarada getting caught off guard by Hidari and he, but here's the thing. Hidari is using the claw marks and he's combining jutsus and he's using them in incredibly brilliant and intelligent, and innovative ways to neutralize the people that he wanted to neutralize to get to his target, which is Sarada. But then lo and behold, Boruto flies in to save the day, right? And he does it before Kawaki gets there. Remember that little prediction I made before we read on in the panels and it turned out that for the most part, my sequence of events was relatively correct and on point. So Kawaki again does nothing. Boruto does everything and if we're comparing the two of them. And um, I'm really curious to see how things unfold. It looks like Konohamaru isn't complete fodder after all. Yes, he got blown away, but he was able to negate enough of Hidari's Chidori to make it so that it wasn't fatal to him. He just got blown back a little bit. He'll get up, he'll be all right, dust himself off, he'll be ready to go again. He'll be all right. Hey, yo, hey, Niggas get shot every day, day he'll you be, be all right. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Paid in full reference, if you know, you know. Um, so I'm curious to see what Konohamaru can do because for far too long in the Boruto manga and the Boruto series, he's kind of been pushed to the side. He was someone that was somewhat built up as like the next thing. So let's see, I don't know if that's anime side of things only, but it'd be nice to see Konohamaru show some real improvement in his ability. And what's up with this summon, man? Look, get the Monkey King back or whatever it is. I can't remember the name of summon. Put that in the comments, guys. If I don't remember. I'm tired. I want to get this out to you guys <laughs> at the time of recording. I have a lot more material to go over. I still am going to be putting out my Kendrick versus Drake analysis, especially in light of the Ken and Friends pop out concert. Woo -wee. I told you I was going to be diversifying my subject matter. It's always been the goal, but um, let me know what you guys think of this issue. I thought this issue was very interesting. Like I said, they got to the shits and uh, we'll see what the implications have in the future going forward. What do you think is going to happen? How do you think board Boruto is going to fare? Do you think Momoshiki is going to come out? Do you think Boruto has enough of a hand on Momoshiki that he's going to, you know, turn the tides with his own skill? Boruto is shown to be god body when it comes to just ridiculous levels of power on his own without Momoshiki and for good reason. So let's see how that turns out. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified for whenever I drop that new heat. Heard. Yes, sir. I'm out.